Hi, my name is Ewan Byer and I'm with the Industry 4.0 Consulting Team. Alongside me on the team, I have Nicole, Matt V, Matt G, and Ethan. Our sponsors are Dave Labiak and Nathir Raj Day. And as a special thank you, we wanted to make sure to mention Vin, Mason, and Dale for helping out with our project. To summarize our project, the purpose of our, of our consulting with the AME Enterprise was to provide the enterprise with the tools needed to implement Industry 4.0 concepts into the foundry right here on the Michigan Tech campus. We planned on doing this by using smart IoT devices to collect data, creating a way to synchronize the data that is being pulled from these tools, providing ease of access to the data that was collected, and of course, making it secure within all the tools used and installed in the project. The first tool we implemented is called the DigiTemp. This was a tool purchased by the enterprise last year, but they were not sure how to install and use the tool properly and provide proper function. Originally, this tool would have a coaxial cable attached to the tool, and then it would be used to track temperatures as the metal is melted in the foundry crucibles. This was a tripping hazard to engineers due to the physical wires running from the device, so they wanted this wireless tool instead. We managed to get the tool to pull data wirelessly, install the computer network so that this tool could be controlled by a computer, and now the foundry has a less hazardous option. The next device on our list was the installation of cameras. These cameras were installed to collect visual data to go along with the temperatures captured during the pouring process. The issue we, issues we ran into was that there was legal issues to resolve before we could progress with the installation. To solve this, we had to explain to the chief of campus police that these cameras were absolutely only for research purposes and get an agreement signed between the chief and the foundry that these cameras would not be used for, for surveillance purposes of the foundry. After getting the proper clearance, we were able to install, mount, and connect these cameras. The next tool would be the spectrometer. This is a vital piece of equipment used by the foundry to test the purity of foundry samples. The issues with this equipment were that the computer used to control it ran on Windows 7, which is very insecure, was not IT compliant, was not cybersecurity CIA compliant, and was not allowed to use the internet as well as students were unable to connect USB devices to the computer. All of those issues bring up the problem of getting data off the computer in a quick and easy format and left students to write down their data on a piece of paper. To resolve these issues, we purchased a new computer, upgraded the software to be 64-bit compatible, and managed to get the computer IT compliant. Our solution should last about five to eight years in the foundry. In order to move data from the from these three tools, we needed a computer network installed. We had a third party come into the foundry and install a conduit system so that we could put network cables from those devices to a centralized location where all the data could be stored. This local area network is isolated from the internet, would be hard to, harder to take data from, and can be used indefinitely in the foundry for future projects, including the Industry 4.0 project. Our final tool would be our Arduino project. Originally, this project was started last year by a prior team, and we inherited their initial design. Its purpose is to track temperature readings of foundry molds that are used in the pouring process and eliminate the physical thermocouple wires running from the main foundry computer. If a mold cools evenly, the outcome is an effective project product, which is why we are reading data on the cooling process. The biggest problem we were solving was the occasion of having more than 10 wires running along the foundry floor, which made a tripping hazard for students and faculty. When we got the device, it was able to pour, pull four readings. The code was not optimized well enough to transfer any data wirelessly and outputted the temperature readings only inside the Arduino IDE serial monitor window. Our team redesigned the product with the Arduino parts meant to be made into an IoT device cut down our wire lengths inside the Arduino, and designed for giving the actual Arduino board the most protection inside the case. The Arduino is now able to track seven readings at a time, wirelessly push that data to the cloud, 
and that data is now able to be downloaded from the cloud to be put into graphs. That is our project. Thank you for listening. We are looking forward to seeing you at the Design Expo.